Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts and in this session we're going to be looking at learning theories. It is a revision session, there is a presumption of a certain amount of knowledge, so uh, let's get started. So what theories do you need to know? Uh, these are the operant theory, Bandura's observational learning theory, the cognitive theory, and also how each one of these are supported by reinforcement. So we're going to break each one of these down uh, and then look at a 10 mark question on one of those uh, a little bit later on. Okay, so um, Skinner's theory of operant conditioning, those that did psychology uh, will recognize the, the rat in the corner. And uh, basically it's talking about trial and error. So when we're learning a new skill, what we're trying to do is modify the behavior or shape the behavior that's going to suit our outcomes. That is reinforced by praise which helps to stimulate and strengthen the stimulus response bond and the environment is usually manipulated so you're just thinking about a practice that's going to get the outcome that you want and these are the main characteristics of operant conditioning so if that was your question identify or explain the characteristics of operant conditioning these are the areas that you need to focus on all right so um, let's put this into context very quickly for you just as a reminder so think about this guy and his practice so what we've got is the environment is manipulated in the sense that he we're getting this guy to aim into the particular box uh, the teacher has set up a practice that allows the stimulus to be presented in a structured environment there will obviously be trial and error it's not going to get it right every single time straight away and then through this trial and error, the learner will attempt a number uh, of responses to the repeated server. And then the behavior is slowly modified. How this is actually done is by ensuring that we get reinforcement. So what we're doing is reinforcing the stimulus response bond by giving praise. So every time, obviously, he gets it in then we're going to reinforce the correct behavior, the bef modified behavior, through praise, therefore strengthening the stimulus response bond. So when the correct response is given, the target is hit, there will be praise given, and then none given if the target isn't hit. So therefore we are modifying this person's behavior. Okay? So that's how that process works uh, and using that example. So that's a really important key is whenever you're trying to explain any of these theories, you apply it to a practical example. That's an essential skill if you're going to score well on each one of the uh, questions. All right, so if you had a four marker, uh, very obvious here. So explain operant conditioning. You're identifying the key characteristics, trial and error, etc. Okay. So pause that, have a look at that, go through it in your own time. All right, so some of the advantages and disadvantages, um, just so that we're developing our understanding of it, is um, it enables skills to be learned very, very effectively because uh, you can break them down into those smaller subroutines uh, and identify which part you're actually looking to have. So it relates really, really well to part learning. What it doesn't allow, though, is that kinesthesis, that flow of how you would use that particular shot within a game situation. So there is the negative of it. So reinforcement was identified for each one of the theories. So let's have a look at how we actually reinforce. And there are different ways. There's positive. So very obviously, this is uh, after a successful uh, behavior is identified, there is praise given, and this can be tangible or intangible rewards. So that can be the traditional pack on the, pat on the back, which is obviously an intangible, or it could be tangible in the sense of a medal, uh, something, something as obvious as that. But then with negative, there is the removing of a ne negative stimulus where undesired behavior. So that can actually reinforce. So think about this, and I think this is a nice way to do it. So a coach, a coach may frown, when you're not doing it very well, but once the frown is taken away, we're now encouraging the correct behavior, but not in the same way as positive. You haven't praised them or anything, but what you've done is taken away this negative element. 
all right really go through that make sure you understand the difference between those two all right so back to our guy there so punishment one thing we can do is uh, give a punishment this involves the unpleasant stimulus to the performer to prevent a response occurring so high tackle you get a red card uh, and lots of other different examples you can have a coach shouting at you uh, or showing signs of disappointment uh, as a punishment um, losing points within a game for foul play something like that uh, and there's your example of a red card all right so there's a different theory the cognitive theory of learning and this one here as uh, i'm sure you'll be able to remember is the gestalt uh, which means the whole thing and that in itself if you can remember gestalt and cognitive then you're, you're on to a winner because it's the, the the main crux of the theory so this one is learning through uh, practices that aren't as as manipulated but more of the whole practice so uh, it's complete contrast to the connectionist, in other words, building up those small connections into a larger skill. This one gives you the whole skill. So if you remember that, you're on to a winner. Um, but this cognitive process is dependent on your perception. So, and it's also based on past experience and knowledge of plan or how to protect or how to, uh, to outwit an opponent. So in this two-to-one situation, you're presuming that this person here has a certain element of understanding about what they're actually supposed to do. So if they're running forward, do they pass, do they run, do they kick, what do they do? But there is this process uh, and it is dependent on the perception of uh, each one of the participants. So the greater the experience, the more likely they are to be able to use this the theory of learning. And um, there's another sort of term that's used quite a lot with this and it's this intuitive learning this insight it's that eureka moment aha I know how to beat this person I know what to do in this situation I fake the pass and I pass to somebody else and uh, you develop that and it's the idea is the insight learning advantage of that one the cognitive process is dependent on perception is a disadvantage the gestalt learning is dependent on previous experience you could argue that that's a disadvantage one of the real advantages though is it allows that flow that sense of the skill that kinesthesis and you get an idea of where it fits within the game that's a real advantage okay so it's a really important point to note there all right and then finally bandura's observational uh, observational learning theory this one basically turns around and says what you see is what you copy but you're more likely to copy the behavior of someone who you are similar to so gender one straight away so girls copy girls boys copy boys for the most part um so is that going to be you are you copying some gangster type scenario that you've seen on the tv and therefore you think that that's what you should do this kid clearly has been following his dad to the football matches very nice but then look at this is diving now within our game because of people like Wayne Rooney, not that he's the only one. Or are people following this role model, uh, one to uh, the elite level? So that's the idea behind the theory. Um, there, there are other points in relation to this one as well. Is you're more likely to follow people in a high status. So back in the day when Michael Jackson hung his baby out the window, everyone was shocked because they knew how many people would potentially mirror him. Fantastic image of a, a great father. Now, the reason we've got these pictures here is it's also to do with a balanced and active healthy lifestyle. And it's one of those key questions that this comes up on. So not only can it be about the development of skill, but it also is the development of, as I said, balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. So people will watch and they will mirror our behavior so here you've got some nice examples of kids mirroring their parents interesting one there that the kid is arguably mirroring slash helping the lack of a balanced active healthy lifestyle okay so uh, Bandura indicates that learning can only take place though if the learner has these four things in place uh, they have the motor skills to reproduce them in other words the ability or the skill the attention, in other words, are they actually focused on it? The retention, uh, can they recall what they've seen? And then also the motivation, can you be bothered to actually do that? 
and the way that we remember this is to be armed are you armed uh, to observe and then perform so let's quickly look at that in a 10 mark we're not going to go through the whole thing but just to give you an idea how that would potentially fit in so identify what the subject qualifier is identify what the command word is the key thing is here is it says refer to Bandura's model in your answer so that's exactly where we need to go so using practical examples explain the process of observation and learning and what it's used for acquiring movement skills to follow an active and healthy lifestyle so a performer the cues they have to selectively attend or focus on the correct cues for them to be able to uh, carry those out and if you're talking about a uh, balanced and active healthy lifestyle are they focused on the person um, eating the apple or are they focused on the person drinking the alcohol so that's how you could uh, use that one there so the repetition of a demonstration or role models movement or behavior will aid memory and then then itself it should be repeated and M is the the motivation so the observer must be able oh, so there's a motor skill so must be able to perform the particular skill it doesn't really travel across too well on the balanced active healthy lifestyle that one but um, we can have a look at the mark, uh, mark schema later and then last but not least the drive or the motivation the observer must actually want to learn to copy that model and that's where that high status really comes into its own people are more likely to follow and copy and have the drive if somebody is of a high status that's why you have um, the the superstars modeling and exhibiting you know razors or foods or deodorants or aftershaves is they want those people to market their products because they believe that you are more likely to follow them because of their status okay so uh, the rest of that 10 market is on the ashp.weebly.com webpage uh, do check it out uh, it's under the revision section and there are some other questions under the acquiring movement skills section as well hopefully that will have been a help uh, to you just to get your head back into the terminology and each one of the theories so uh, thank you very much and I'll speak to you soon.